For Circular Motion Lab, you're going to be analyzing some videos that I made using this lab setup. It's just a freely rotating platform, and we're going to have different masses on like a little plastic sled that's just free to slide back and forth on this platform along this little track. And if I just give this a little spin, that mass slides back until the string that's attached to it gets taut and there's tension inside of here. So in order for this mass to move in a circular path, we know that the sum of the forces on the mass at any point has to be pointed towards the center of the circular path that it's following. And so this tension right here is going to be equal to the sum of the forces that's pointed towards the center of the circular path. Well, we know there's a normal force the mass experiences and a gravitational force, but those two things cancel out. And so the, the most significant force that's left over after every, all the forces are added up will be the tension that's pointing towards the center of the circular path. This wireless force sensor is gonna tell us how much tension is in that string and therefore the size of the sum of the forces on this object. So if I just give this little spin, you can see that there's about 0.9 newtons of tension. Notice that the tension is going down a little bit because there's a little bit of friction in that rotating platform. And so we would expect that the speed of that mass is getting a little bit smaller over time and it wouldn't need as big of a net force or some of the forces pointed towards the center to keep it following that circular path. Well, we want to be able to figure out <clears throat> how much net force is needed or the size of the sum of the forces, which is tension, for different speeds. So now let's get a formal purpose statement down for our circular motion lab. Our purpose is going to be to determine the relationship between the velocity of an object moving in a circular path at a constant speed and the needed size of the sum of the forces on that object, which we know has to be pointed towards the center of the circular path. So in order to determine the relationship between the velocity of the mass moving in a circular path and the needed size of the sum of the forces, we're going to have to get some data which has the mass moving at different velocities or different speeds around that circular path and measure how much tension is needed, which is the size of the sum of the forces needed to make it follow that circular path. Once we have that data, we're going to graph the sum of the forces on the y-axis and the velocity values in the x-axis to find out how they're graphically related and algebraically related to one another. Here's an example of one of the videos that some of you will use to collect data for this lab. This comes from the data set number one video and this is just the first trial and you can see that this mass and the plastic sled is on is moving around in a circular path and the total combined mass of the metal and the plastic is going to be given down here. So it's 0.163 kilograms or about 163 grams. You can see that it's moving around a circular path. The center of the mass is about 20 centimeters away from the point about which it's rotating, the center of that rotating platform. And so the radius of curvature this is following is 0.2 meters. And we need to figure out two things how much tension is in that string, the size of the sum of the forces. That's the easy one because this right here is a wireless force sensor and this value gives us the size of the force that the sensor is feeling, which is the tension in that string. And so this mass is experiencing a net force or a sum of the forces that's about 0.86 or 0.87 newtons in size. The only question we need to figure out is how fast is that mass traveling? Well, this video right here is shot at about a quarter normal speed. What you see here is shot at normal speed. And so this mass, 163 grams approximately, is moving around the circular path fairly fast. And the question is, well, how fast is it moving around that circular path? Well, I have a drill hooked up to this rotating platform. It's not just sprinting freely. And this is just ensuring that that mass is moving at a constant speed around its circular path. And anything that's moving at a constant speed, we can just take the displacement of that object divided by the time it takes to, to make that displacement, and that will give us what that constant speed is. Well, it's always being displaced farther and farther and farther the more it rotates. So let's just pick a specific displacement, like one full rotation. That means that mass is going to go around a particular circumference of that circular path. So it's going to travel the circumference or 2 pi r and how much time does it take to do that well we just need to time 
how much time it takes for that one full rotation. So for this particular trial for data collection video number one, that mass is at a radius of curvature of about 0.2 meters away. The center of the mass is 20 centimeters away from there. And so the circumference is just going to be 2 pi times 0.2 meters. And if you use the data collection video and advance the video through frame by frame, you can use on YouTube at least, if you use the period key, it advances it forward one frame. The comma key will advance it back by one frame each time you press it. And using that and the timer in the video, you can find out approximately how much time it takes for the mass in each trial to go one full rotation. For this one, it took about 1.13 seconds. So that makes a displacement of about 1.26 meters, the circumference of this circular path. It took about 1.13 seconds. And so the mass is moving around at about 1.11 meters per second. So that's our first data point. For a velocity of about 1.11 meters per second, it required a net force or the size of the sum of the forces pointed towards the center of the circular path to be about 0.86 newtons in size. So when you're taking data, you're going to actually have to have a third column of data with your measured time for one rotation, which is going to allow you to calculate your velocity. And then the wireless force sensor will tell you the needed size of the sum of the forces. That's one data point on our sum of the forces versus velocity graph. In order to get the rest of your data on your data collection video, uh, there's going to be subsequent trials, one after the other, where the mass is going to be rotating faster and faster and faster yet, and you can calculate the approximate velocity of the mass in each trial and use the digital display of the wireless force sensor to figure out the needed size of the sum of the forces. Linked in the video description below are six data collection videos, and each data collection video is filled with trials like we just went through, except they're going to be different masses and they're going to be at different radius of curvatures. Also linked in the video description below is a conclusion discussion video, which is going to summarize the conclusions we reach together as a class or we will reach together as a class.